So it's going to look something like this. I don't, uh, I'm sorry, John. It's okay. Just, so, I'll move around. Okay. So I'm using a program called VCarve Pro. And so we, you know, I've already done the drawings and everything and the chips loaded and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to show you the drawing. So we do a star. And then I take this very same shape because I'm going to, I need a pocket. And then I need a plug or an inlay, so to speak. So one is this piece here is going to be the, the light color with the pine in this case. And this one's going to be my mahogany. And I'm going to cut it out. I'll explain why there's a square around this one. So this one is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to do a pocket cut. Now if I went over to the tool path, those of you who understand uh, or have done uh, any of this kind of stuff before, um, this is, uh, I was telling you a while ago, there's actually three tools that runs this thing. Um, so I can go up here, let me just double click on that, and so it'll pull up the tool path and it's going to do them in this order. A quarter inch end mill, an eighth inch end mill, and a 60 degree uh, V-bit. The reason you do that in that order is for time, for the sake of time. We want, to, we want to get through the job as efficiently as we can, but also preserving quality. So the quarter inch is going to clear out like everything in the middle, this big patch. Now keep in mind, this is going to be, we're going down to <laughs> 0.2 inches. So this inlay is 0.2 inches deep, or the pocket is 0.2 inches deep. So we're going to clear it with a quarter, then I'll change tools, I'll put an eighth bit in there, and it'll get in there to the finer stuff. And then we'll go to the V-bit, and that does the real fine stuff. That gets me these nice, clean points. And what I'm going to end up with is if I look at the, if I was looking at a section drawing, if I cut this in half, you'd see a, a, literally a V. So it'll fit in there kind of like a cork fits into a bottle, mm -hmm. inlay. Now with the V cutting, when we're talking about making these nice sharp points, when you, when you have a V, uh, it kind of nixes the rotary tool concept because I'm cutting down to a point. So when I bring that bit all the way to that corner and I change to go to this vertex and then that one and then that one, every time I change directions, it comes to literally an absolute point. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with a regular end mill. If I did that with an end mill, I would end up with a radius, right? Mm -hmm. right? Okay, right. so that's why we use, a, that's why V carving, and I get these really nice tight seams. It's almost Beautiful. perfect, you know? And so just as a point of reference, this is done with an actual, this is a flat bottom deal here. I did a 32nd inch end mill. It took about two hours, I'm not kidding you. I was, this was my first one I tried. It turned out pretty, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty good. I had a little booby right here. I, had to, I tried to fill it in and you kind of, if you really scrutinize it, you'll see it. But uh, if you want to pass it around, you, you can. Um, Anyway, so we'll go over here to the, this guy here. Let's talk about the square that I'm doing. Okay, now, let's see. Where's my cursor? There it is. Did you okay, cut and paste that? Over here. No, the star is a tool. Right there. Hang on a second. I don't know what that is. One of the items oh, you can choose to draw in there. Okay. So, what I'm going, what I need now is I need something to plug into this hole that I've cut. So, the, the square around here is going to, so the program is going to cut all this material between the square and the star such that I end up with a piece that's got a, an angle to it. So, the, what I actually see on the top is actually the bottom. Okay, let me explain that. So, when I take, when, this, when all this is cut out, I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it face down into the wood. And I'm going to clamp it and glue it. And I'm going to wait for some amount of time until the glue dries and I'm going to clean that off. So that's what we're going to do. It's just a simple pipe. So all, yeah. all this excess stuff here. Now I could actually program this to level all that out so I would just be able to go and stick it right in there. For the case of the demonstration, I'll cut this away on the, on the, uh, on the bandsaw in, in a little bit. So that's, the, that's kind of the setup. So we'll go over to the CNC. I'll space it fairly, fairly straight. Middle, so we'll take this. Okay, I'm just going to fasten this down so it doesn't go flying away. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Okay, now I'm going to put my first bit collet. there get it started okay and 
tighten it up. Always tighten your bits up. If you don't, Why? bad things happen. <laughs> okay. So, and yes, that is an Xbox controller. <laughs> I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So we can take this thing. So we can put it right where we want it. I'm going to slow it down a little bit now. So lower it. Did that come with that or did you just? Yeah, they came with that, yeah. An Xbox control. Yeah, you can actually, I can do all the motions over here on the, on the touch screen as well. Um, but it's it's not as, this is way easier. So for a few for a few dollars more, you can kind of get it. So what I want to do, I'm just going to eyeball that as close as I can to the center of that X I made on there. So I'm working in the center of my wood because that's what the program is going to be looking for. So if I, if I put it, if I, if I set my origin over here, I'm going to cut across that screw. I'm going to tear a bunch of stuff up. It's not going to look right. I'm going to, you know, break a lot of stuff. So we want to, so I'm going to set that as my X, Y. So that's now my new origin. Now we'll raise this back up and then I'm going to set what's called my Z axis, which is going to tell the machine where exactly the top of this piece of work is in reference to the, to the table. The way I do that, it's got a little probe, it's real simple. We just ground it, put that there, and I'm gonna go ahead and lower it just a little bit. There we go. And Z, probe Z. I make continuity with it so it knows it's got something there, and I touch it. Now it'll go down until it touches. And it's gonna come up and it's gonna confirm. And it's done. Okay, so now. Wow. We have X, Y, and Z configured. We're all set. Now, for this first part, I'm going to put the dust boot on because this roughing cut it throws a lot of stuff everywhere, and I'm going to try to I'm going to try not to make too big a mess. Let me pop on my my pump and my vacuum. Hopefully, this vacuum won't back up on me. Sometimes it. Does.
go ahead and start it right without this. This one don't throw too much shrapnel. So yeah, I just get to put those a little bit finer point on the start. When we get to the V bit, it'll do even even a finer point. I could actually run this a lot faster, uh, but for the demonstration, I thought it'd be good to slow it down a little bit. You're going too fast in front of me. Huh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so my two clearing bits have run in what about two minutes or so of, of actual grind of uh, carving time. So now we're ready. We'll put the last bit in. This is the one that'll do all the the hard work and give us our actual pocket that we need. Let's see what it looks like prior to the finish. Are you only getting now? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me pull some chips off of it. So what is good? Seventy-five percent. You see the step, how it steps it. Yeah. So anytime you're uh, you're clearing for a V for a V car, that's typically what you'll see. You'll see a step kind of pattern. So when that V comes in there, it'll hit that on a diagonal. It's got a low, a pretty low chip load, and it'll uh, it'll let it uh, do its thing. It takes take all the steps out. It, yeah, it'll take those steps out because yeah. it's doing this. My, because the ultimate shape is a, is a V, like a like a forty a sixty degree slope, right? Yeah. So, Have you seen this? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what this is doing. It's about the same thing. Mm -hmm. set in the collet pretty deep you know only because the, you know as you the further you extend that out the more vibration you get and vibration is your enemy when you're doing high-speed rotary work you know so you have to be careful what is the speed of that router? we're doing 15,000 on this bit right now it'll do 24,000 though there you go. does it pre-select the speed for the no I, I do that so yeah. In your bit library, you can actually set your bits up for different materials and different bits. So I can set this bit up for, uh, for MDF or hardwood or softwood, and I can have three different personalities yeah. based on what I'm doing with it, the chip load and everything. Wow. Yeah. What does that bit cost? That bit, that's a, that's, a hundred, that's a solid carbide bit, so it's probably 15 to 20 bucks, maybe. Yeah. Now that one, that one came in a set of four that came with the with the CNC machine, I, and I think I paid ninety dollars for all four bits. So I got a quarter, an eighth, one of the a v, one of those V's, and I think I got a sixteenth inch uh, end mill. So three end mills and a V. There's probably a thousand more you could buy. Oh yeah, I've got a few here, and, and every time I you know, I look at some, I'm like, yeah, look, I might do that, do that. And I actually do have a, a, a metal job to do for a guy. I'm making a plaque for a, a Boy Scout project. So uh, I'm going to engrave it and do a couple of tricks with powder coating to give it a two-tone effect and make it look antique or whatever age. And so you do your own oven powder coating? Well, I, I have a, a giant system. i got probably one of the biggest systems in this part of the country at work. Really? I built it myself, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, guys in the powder coating industry who would do that for just just do that for a living, they come and go, "Wow, that's <laughs> pretty nice." <laughs> so we 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 have a we have a make architectural products, so we use it to coat a lot of our products. So, so do you do, I mean, do you do it for other people? Or is this your no, no, it's just our, our we're an OEM, so yeah, just our stuff. I do a little government work on the side. My boss, I'm 
I'm going to suffer him. You know? <laughs> He's always got something he wants to do, so. So right here it says we got about two more minutes to go. Like I said, I kind of got it running a little slow. But you do, uh, you know, uh, when you do this kind of work, if you want the better, you run a little slower, you get much, much better uh, results. Because you're looking for nice, clean seams, you know. Uh, when you do inlay work, because the inlay is a focal point. I mean, that's what—that's the point. Oh, you know, yeah. you're gonna, everybody's gonna be staring at it, so you want to make sure it's right, it looks good. And I've been an inlay guy for a long time, but I always did it the hard way, like with chisels or maybe straight router bits, and just doing straight lines with, you know, like stuff like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. I did—I've done tons of that kind of stuff. This is a whole other world here, man. You can just do whatever you want, you know. Yeah. And you know, you can do an inlay inside of an inlay inside of an inlay if you want, you know. Um, one of the one of the things I'm working on right now, I've got a. All right, we're done. Good. Okay, so the first piece is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and back this out of the way. We'll take it off the table. Whoop, this one here. And we'll go ahead and put the second piece down. Diamond bits for that. So that's 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 it right there. That's gonna be our base. Back in my right back here, sorry. <laughs> wow. Do they do they make diamond for that? A diamond drag bit? Yeah, yeah. For etching glass and such. Glass and yeah. And yeah, stones. exactly, yep. That's one bit I'm, I'm, I'm looking at right now. They're a little pricey. You're looking at probably 60, 80 bucks. Mm, they're close to 100 bucks for that one, yeah. But, I mean, once you buy the whole thing, you can buy the replacement cutter, the business end of it, for 20 or 25 bucks. So it's not too bad. It's like a set screw type. Ain't that cool? Right. Uh oh. Put it in upside down. Mark. There we go. That's better. Without that, I don't know where I'm going. I get stuff backwards a lot. How uh, <laughs> how much of a learning curve was this for you? I know you've got a lot of uh, stuff. Well, I mean, if I wanted to do something like this, am I looking at it's months or years? Or? <laughs> it really is about. I and mean, uh, you've heard Owen say this plenty of times. I have, and I took heed. But it's it's a computer. Thing. It's a it's how comfortable are you with a computer? Yeah. This part here, I'm not doing anything but screwing a part to the table. I mean, yeah. I could teach a Reese's monkey to do that. That's not hard. This is the easy part. That's the hard part over there. Yeah. So if you're comfortable with a computer, now the software, I, I, I had a bit of an advantage because I, I played with CAD and some other things mm -hmm. through my career. You know, right. off and on. Now I never was a CAD designer, nothing like that. I had a vague knowledge of it. I, I was an you know, took engineering classes in tech and stuff like that. Yeah. So I had a little bit of a head start. But I say, if, if it's something you really want to do, you can do it. It's just you, but you have to put the time in to learn that part. That's the, that's the, really the, the trick of it. Well, one thing about VCarve is you can download a free version that really doesn't generate any code, and you can follow the tutorials for free just to see if it makes sense to you or it's way too much. So that's what I recommend to everybody. If you're not sure about the computer part, you can follow tutorials and see if you like it, see if you can do it. Okay, so just like I did with the first piece, I have to now tell the machine where my new center is because I've just put a new piece of wood on here. And I'll show you, compared to where it was, I'm pretty close to where I was before actually, because I'm using the same amount of four, about a four inch offset, but I'm that much off, so I need to go hit that button and it zeroes it, hit that one and zeroes it so now that's my new xy origin the center of my workpiece and so i'll raise this back up and i'll take my z probe is this one all 45 well i need to change the, yeah no, i got you no no yeah i, would, I, I use that because it's easier to center it up oh yeah that's but yeah i need to go back to the quarter bit again and i'll probably gonna run the dust boot one more time as well See, on the center of this one isn't horribly critical as long as you stay within the scope of the 
project. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because well, something like yeah, that's right. I've got I've got big yeah. margins. Yeah, I got huge margins on this. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But if you were doing something like John, I did some pin boxes for John. He had a you know he had a bunch of boxes and his clip was just a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. So that one I had to be smack mm -hmm. on, and so I built a jig that held the thing and and lined it up perfectly. And it took a couple of tries. You know, you start out very conservatively, and you get to the margins, and then you lock it in. And you just do them all. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and don't stop. <laughs> um, now, one other thing I noticed you do that may be different. When it, whenever I center off the surface uh -huh. and I blow out the part under it, I move my X and Y to a fresh part of the wood. So. If I have a big project, oh sure, sure, and you yeah. eat the center out, I mean, you lose your reference. So that's you, exactly I go, right. I go back to the edge, and that's where I zero. That, I'm glad you brought that up. But on this particular project, yeah. um, because it's such a small deal, I can use my Z probe. Mm -hmm. So if, I, like you said, if I were to hog out a big mess of stuff out of here and I had to go and put that back in again, I'd be in, I'd be in trouble. Yes. Wouldn't be nowhere for it to, to set it. So if I was doing something like that, you can set that uh, origin to this corner. That corner, that corner, that corner, or the center. Mm -hmm. You have five choices mm -hmm. off if you're using a probe. Now, I could unplug the probe and just do the old fashioned way and just use a shim right, right. Or, or something and lower it to, to the point I need it to. But on mine, you can lower it. You can zero the Z anywhere. So you can manually move it to a yeah, piece that's still I, up. I can do that on this one. I just don't know how yet. I got you. <laughs> And one thing Faulkner, I got that for you. <laughs> one thing Faulkner taught me is if you're if you're going through, I uh -huh. use the the, um, the machine bed for the reference. Right. Anything that's, that's right. Everything is referenced from the bottom. Like that's you're cutting through. Yep. And if you're cutting down, a certain you use the top of the wood for the reference. So, right. And I have projects where I have both. Matter of fact, the wedgie sled, yeah. I use both references. I'm still such a beginner. I I, I haven't gotten uh, too fancy with all that yet. I want to because I've found myself in, in, in spots where I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> Yep. What am I going to do now? I've got myself worked myself into a corner, you know, so to speak. So, um, let me see. Let's see let's that baby out. All right. See, and that zero operates wherever the spindle is. You could move your spindle mm -hmm. down into the right. That's right. <coughs> yep. Now we're doing the, the, the actual inlay, not the pocket anymore. So I'm going to go back into my into my directory here, and I'm going to find star inlay open. It'll configure the Z the, uh, the G code, and oh, they did give me a an ETA on that one. Turn this.
Three-phase table, you know, so it's a three-phase power supply. Two twenty-three phase, yeah. Yeah. Looks like you get the brush from the water. Uh, I don't know what that. It may be from the treatment I put in it. I've got a uh, anti-rust treatment in there. Yeah. I know it does look like that though, doesn't it? Mark, there's the one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, the VFD acts like a phase converter. Yeah. It converts single phase to three phase. And right. And it, it hurts. Infinite cycles, right? Yes. So this motor here, to get to 24,000, it has to run at 400 hertz to get the maximum speed. Now, when I turn that thing up and down, what I'm effectively doing is I'm changing the frequency. And that's what's going to change the motor, not the volts or the amps. Oh. And, and actually, the three phase is what is called. Uh, oh, shit. It's not truly a three phase. It starts off as single phase. That's right. It goes to three phase. think so. The yeah. Rotary wheel. I think so, yeah. The VFD drives that we use on all the equipment yeah. is, is implemented. Yeah. You know. I just found a little. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. I really don't even need this because this thing is so well grounded. Oh, just yeah. force a habit. No, three phase runs up there. Yeah, if that's not. That make good contact. It will snap a bit. Oh yeah. Even if that thing, this thing does. If it notices a little bit of movement, that's why you see me holding it on when I got these voids, mm -hmm. because it'll go. It tries to ram it right through the table, you know, and then it'll fall out. It's just a pain in the butt. No, okay. All right. Home stretch. This last, this last cut, last tool. Yeah. Have you done much bee carving? Uh, not a lot, no. Just a, just a little bit. Like I said, I'm just, uh, we were on the, we, me and my wife, we've been traveling for between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We've been all over the country, man, so I haven't really done much of anything. Uh, a little bit here and there. I'm still just kind of experimenting, just trying to find out what I like to do and right. trying to find, I really want to start making some guitar bodies, but I keep getting bombarded with all this other work, you know, and, hey, make me this, can you do that, and all, whatever. A job sheet on one. That's a pick guard, yeah, so I made yeah. my, I made some wooden pick guards right. where I take a piece of really nice veneer and lamb it to a piece of thin acrylic right. and then cut it out. I mean, I got some really good results out of that. You mean me making them or you making them? Well, I, I can make the pick, but I was thinking about doing something real fancy. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. ivory picks are supposed to be one of the best picks. Right. I don't think I've ever... Real ivory? Or... Where do you get real ivory at? Don't you get thrown in jail for that? No, that's not ivory. Yeah. I get fossilized. Okay, there you go. Wooly mammoth and... Uh... Yeah, he works for custom. He's got a garage full. <laughs> It's like when you got Jurassic Park or something. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Okay, so we just now we've got our plug cut. I'm gonna have to. I'll trim this up with the. Uh, what am I? There we go. That's what I want. Oh, 
I hate my porter cable tools. You hate them? Yeah. Do I do. I hate them. I'm, I'm used to. Uh, Steve, you know what? It's misleading because Steve, that's going to be proud of the top. Hold those up. Okay, we'll get into why that is here Steve, in a second. Steve, hold those up for one minute. Yeah, you're looking at the bottom. Okay, uh, this is all free. Now, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> that's the way it fits. Now, there's some parameters on the toolpath that I can adjust to change that interface. This is a pretty good interface because what it does is it leaves me about uh, 0.1 of glue space in the bottom. So, if you go much more than that, then it becomes weakened, you know, if you have too big of a void. But point one is what all the guys I've watched. And so we'll just, we're going to glue this up and I'll show you the clamping technique on something like this. Just making those kind of adjustments. Okay, so we'll glue this. I'm just going to do this real quick here because I've got to finish one over there. Just like they do on TV when they cook mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it in the tub. I'm not gonna make y'all wait for the glue to dry. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I wouldn't go do that to you. <laughs> so we'll sit that right in there. I don't even know how that's going in there. That's the magic of TV. Grain to grain. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right here. So this is a real simple deal, deal here. So I've got a little call here so I can get even pressure on it. It's important when you do bigger work in this kind of this kind of technique, you want to really apply good even pressure across the deal. Yeah. So you, you might want to set some calls up that are, you know, so get that firm and just crank down on it, just like so. And that'll, while well, that's drying, <laughs> meanwhile back at the ranch. Oh, so oops. here's another one I did already. And so when it comes out of the clamps, it'll be oh, something this, like that, right? This is a cooking show, yeah. So that, that's what that'll look like in, in an hour or so. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do, and there's a lot of ways I could put this back on the machine, bolt it down, and run a surfacing bit and surface it that way. If, I, if it were a more complex piece, that's what I would do. But since this is pretty simple, I'll just take it over to the bandsaw and I'll very, very, very good get on it. So if I go to this one here, and I pull up, let's see, let's see, I think it's this one here, it's right here. So I'm doing a start depth of 0 0.1, so when I cut this pocket out, my start depth is zero, because I want to start at zero, this is zero. Mm -hmm. The computer thinks now that I'm going to start at tenth of an inch below the surface, so it adjusts all that geometry so that actually that little inlay plug actually is somewhat smaller than that. Mm -hmm. And it comes together, and because it's at point 0.1 to a point 0.1 depth, I end up with that point 0.1 space for my glue joint. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Yep. A little bit? It does. Yep. It's hard for me to understand it. <laughs> so, um, well, you explained it what? Okay, well, I think... No, I'll, forget <laughs> it. I'll forget it before I get home. But, <laughs> but that's, that's, how, that's how it works. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you, because I've done this a few times, and if you don't, if I, if let's say I've made that zero, if I made the, the inlay, I set it at zero the same as that, it wouldn't fit in there. It would be exactly the same, so the bottom of that plug oh. would be exactly the same size as the top of the pocket. And you wouldn't have I couldn't get space. any engagement. That's, That's exactly right. right. So when I tell it point one, it's shrink, it's almost like it's shrinking it. Now to your question a while ago, Owen, so I can actually do a pocket allowance here. Unfortunately, on, when you use that that box on this type of deal, 
it actually makes it small. It doesn't make it bigger. It makes right. it smaller. So it, therefore, it makes the fit worse. You put in the allowance? I tried that. It won't take it. It won't take it. It'll take it, but it won't process it. Won't it. It'll, it'll, okay. As soon as I hit calculate, it turns it back into a positive gotcha. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought of that too, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't mm -hmm. understand Makes that sense. kind of algebra. So anyway, that is amazing. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, uh, look at there. I'm still under seven o'clock. Look at Good job. All right. <laughs> so here's a little one I did a while back. This is the same thing. I didn't do as good a job sanding it, but a little part. And uh, you know, wow. you, you just you know, just you can do any kind of contrasting woods or whatever, you know. Like I said, I'm a beginner at this. I'm just learning. So the shape was oh, is that right? You chose the shape, or yeah. did you yep. draw? Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, can, I can. Could you hand free draw?